Welcome to part two of our live training session here with our Sport Front Wheel Drive Acura Integra. In our last tutorial, we focused on setting up our inputs and outputs. This tutorial, we're gonna be jumping in and learning how to configure all of the two-dimensional and three-dimensional base tables, such as fuel and spark timing, and everything that's going to go along with any programming in order to get our engine to fire up and run. We're gonna have a lot to cover. Let's jump into our live training session so we can get started. Welcome back to our live training session here with our Sport Front Wheel Drive Acura Integra. The last video we focused on the input and output configuration setup, building our base map. We've tested everything, we know it all works. We're now ready to take a look at configuring the two dimensional and three dimensional tables within our tuning section. We can find our window right up the top here within our tuning section of our MTune software. So let's jump into that right now and we're gonna start off working our way from left to right in terms of all the features and functions and the tables that we need to configure and program for the base map creation. The first thing we're going to start off with here in this tutorial is jumping in here to fuel and to main VE table one. Now in this particular configuration that we're working with, we are working in speed density operation mode, so we're going to be using a volumetric efficiency table. Now what's unique about this is that the engine efficiency or efficiency calculation is going to be taking a look at the relationship between our MAP pressure sensor, the manifold air pressure sensor fitted to the intake manifold of the engine and also taking a look at the exhaust manifold pressure that's fitted to the collector on our turbo manifold. We're actually looking at the relationship, so MAP divided by EMAP. It's a constant percentage relationship, and that's what this efficiency calculation here will be based on. Now, if we had the exhaust manifold pressure going and operating at a one-to-one -one ratio to our manifold pressure, we would find that we would always be at 100% efficiency. Now, if we have our MAP pressure, let's say going a couple hundred kPa higher than our exhaust manifold pressure, well then our efficiency calculation can go up here pretty high in value. We want to scale out our efficiency calculation to go as high as 400% in this high boost drag race type situation. Now this MAP over EMAP type of calculation that's being performed can be used on any turbocharged engine. It works extremely well. I like to use it on drag cars just so that if they change elevation, it's going to constantly index what that elevation is going to be as well as index what the exhaust mass flow will be at different elevation changes. Both will play a role in our efficiency and how it's going to be sourcing our airflow modeling from our VE table. So we've set that up in the last tutorial and now we're going to carry through and build out our table around that concept of map over EMAP. So again, if map is 100 kPa and the EMAP is approximately 100 kPa, we'll find that the efficiency calculation, one divided by another, will be 100%. And in this case, we can see that right now, MAP pressure is approximately 98 kPa. The EMAP is reading key on engine off, approximately 96 kPa. And the relationship between the two will calculate a value of roughly 100. Now the exhaust manifold pressure will be pretty much right around atmospheric when the engine is idling and even in part throttle conditions where the MAP pressure is going to show uh, pulling into vacuum. So we're going to find that the efficiency calculation is going to go down here, probably somewhere along the lines of 30, 40 to 60 percent in this range is where we're going to idle at. And then when we actually get into higher boost situations, it'll vary what it sources for this efficiency calculation, but it could potentially go up as high as 400% if we run very high boost levels. Something like 50 to 60 pounds of boost could allow it to go up to a very high calculation. So we wanna make sure we're accounting for that and preparing our fuel table so that it will reflect that. The other thing we need to consider is that this engine will rev up to 10,000, 10,500 RPM. We need to go and re-index our breakpoints within our main V table so that it can calculate fuel out to that high of an RPM range. We also need to fill the values within the table here themselves, the actual estimation of cylinder filling, the volumetric efficiency percentage. Uh, we need to make sure that these are gonna be relatively accurate to get the engine to fire up and run when we're doing that in the next tutorial. Let's go in here and reconfigure a few things. So I'm gonna go here and click on my table and click A. That's gonna allow me to go in and start to edit my axes. Now, I'm not interested in anything RPM breakpoints, probably below 1,000 RPM for this particular engine configuration. We're gonna be idling around 15 to 2,000, 1,500 to 2,000 RPM because we have locked VTEC. We have a huge camshaft profile when VTEC is locked and enabled all the time. We need to make sure the engine is gonna be idling and running at a higher engine speed. So I'm not gonna concern myself with 250 or 500 RPM breakpoints. So I'm gonna go in here and delete these particular breakpoints. So I can go in and do a delete function. 
do a delete function. And actually what we can do instead of doing that, so it doesn't cause us any kind of problems with the mtron, it doesn't like when you start to delete the breakpoints, let's use our axes setup tool. We're going to say the starting value will be here at 0. And the increment here, let's move in, let's say 1,000 RPM. Let's actually do 500 RPM increments. And we're going to go here and the number of sites. We'll just say generate and we'll do, um, sometimes you can put a, a sites here as all. We'll have a lot of breakpoints there. It might be too many, 39 total breakpoints. Let's say the number of total breakpoints, let's say 25, and let's see what that puts us at. So let's go to generate. That's going to take us all the way out to 12,000 RPM. That's going to be too much. Let's go to 20. Uh, 20 breakpoints here. Let's go to generate. And let's see what that's going to do. Let's actually clear all and then generate. Let's try that again. That is going to take us out to 9,500. So we want to go up to 10,500. So let's do 22 total breakpoints. Let's go here, do generate. And now we can see 10,500. So it's going to be where we're going to rev our engine to or into the range or potential range of where we're going to rev our engine to in terms of the breakpoint. So the x axis, this is efficiency calculation. We're going to start off here at zero in the efficiency calculation. Let's move in increments of something like, let's do 30. And the total number of sites here, let's do, let's see if we can get 30 sites. 25 is the most. We'll do 25. Let's see what that brings us to. Let's go to generate. That brings us all the way up to 720. That's going to be too much. We don't, definitely don't need to go that high. Let's go here to a value of 20. Do generate. And that's taking us here. Oh, not Increment of 209. Let's do increment of 2. Let's try this again here. Not 2. Let's go an increment of 20. I'm sorry. One more time here. Generate. Now 480 is where it's going to go to. So it's moving in 20% increments in our efficiency calculation. Let's click OK. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel so make sure you subscribe and click here thanks for watching and i'll see you guys later